You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. Uh, today we're taking a look at this pen. This is a pen that has been <laughs> requested on my live stream uh, a few times. And it's time to get into some Pelicans because I have a range of Pelicans and I don't think I've ever actually reviewed them. So this is the Pelican M1000. We're starting with the big one. Uh, you'll see these in M1000s, you'll see them in M1005s. The five means that it will have uh, rhodium plated trim, uh, which is silvery instead of the gold trim that I have here on this one. This is a very basic sort of M1000, but really, I mean, the reason I get an M1000 is because the nib is dope, and we'll uh, take a look at that soon. So, up here on the finial, you will see there is a Mama Pelican and one Chick. Uh, I believe these come in several different kinds of uh, designs, so you'll have like a Pelican and two Chicks. I've even heard of a Pelican and zero Chicks, but that might be a rumor. I am not a Pelican historian. These have a long history. You'll also see here the clip is Pelican-y. So you have Pelican face up here, long pelican bill forming the clip, and I think this is a very nice detail. I'm into it. Also, the top of this is like it's kind of stately. It looks almost crown-like with the uh, the various like levels of this uh, of this finial. I think it's very nice. Here on the cap band, you'll see there's a skinny band and a thick band. The thick band is engraved pelican sovereign. Germany. Sometimes you'll find uh, I think West Germany on these. Definitely not this one, uh, denoting a time when those were split. Down the barrel, you'll see it is just, it is opaque black. There is not, uh, this is not translucent or, tra well, actually, got a little bit of a translucency there, which is kind of fun. I've never actually, never actually seen that before, but that's, that's interesting. Uh, inside here, uh, there is a piston. This is the piston filler knob, and these are uh, a pair of trim rings here. One on the piston knob and then one kind of on the barrel. Uh, nope, they're both on the piston knob. So there's a very small step here. And so it's kind of hard to tell. You're not actually going to feel that, really. So don't worry about it too much. Like Your hand's not going to be there. Because this is a big pen. So let's open this up and get to the really special part about the M1000. And that is the nib. Uh, inside the cap, you'll see there's no cap... Um, no uh, like inner cap really. There's kind of a step there which seals it off at the section, which is nice. I haven't had this pen dry out on me. It's a it's a pen that stays wet. In fact, Pelican nibs uh, and pens are renowned for being very wet in their flow and also for having uh, pretty wide nibs. So this one, as you can see, is an 18 karat nib. It is what a uh, sailor pen might call tri-colored because it has gold and then silver and then gold again. I mean, the silver is uh, rhodium plate. And uh, in the center there, you have the pelican with her chick. You have then a rhodium plate here, these swirly loops and such on the nib. And then you have a, a gold uh, gold outline, which I think is, uh, I think it's a really beautiful nib. Uh, mine could actually probably use a little bit of buffing. Some A lot of times they're actually shinier than this. This is just kind of, uh, uh, this is my user. I haven't buffed it yet. And then you have the uh, the feed down here, which is actually quite large. Uh, it has a big feed. I'm not really sure why. I think it's just an aesthetic thing. It's got to balance that giant nib and probably support it because <laughs> it's big. Uh, also, these, are, uh, these nib units unscrew, and so they are really easy to swap in and out uh, if you don't mind getting your fingers a little bit inky because you put your finger here, you're going to get ink on it. Uh, but these come in sizes from, I think, extra fine up to at least uh, triple broad. And they have obliques, there are italics, all kinds of interesting things from the uh, from the Pelican factory in the M800 size, and you can buy the nibs loose uh, fairly often, uh, although they are quite expensive. So uh, there you go. These nibs are also a little bit flexible. I'll show you a little bit on a fingernail, and we'll do a little writing sample later on. But you can see that flexes out pretty pretty well. It's a fairly soft nib as far as those things go. Uh, here in the body, there actually is uh, a uh, an ink window right here. I have, a, I have an ink in it, it's full, and so you can't really see it. We see where that green bit is. That's actually an ink window, and it does help to uh, tell how much ink is in your pen, which is very nice because it's a piston filler and you can't otherwise see. Okay, I found the easiest way to clean these out, by the way, is to unscrew the nib unit, and you just kind of grab it very gently like this, unscrew it, and then I just sort of uh, use a syringe to blast water up and through here, and uh, that, that usually does a pretty good job. All right, so let's look at it next to a whole bunch of other pens, and then uh, we'll look at it, uh, we'll do a little writing sample. Okay, 
Okay, so I have quite a range of uh, of pens here uh, to show you. So, uh, firstly, these right here on this side are all the Pelican models. So, or well, not all of them, but several of the Pelican models. We have the 200, the M200. This is the M600. I don't have a four. Uh, this is an M800, which is my favorite size, and then the 1000 right here. So, uh, going from smallest to largest, we have here a Kaweco Sport. This is a Pilot Prera, the M200. 600, 800, 1000. This is a Pilot 823, and I was not actually, I didn't actually realize that the 823 is just slightly longer than the M1000. Uh, it doesn't feel as heavy though. This has a big old brass piston knob in here, or a piston, uh, piston actually, <laughs> piston shaft thing in here, and so it uh, gives it a good bit of extra weight. Then you have the VAC 700, the Vanishing Point from Pilot, the uh, Mont Blanc 146, the Lamy All Star, the Platinum 3776. This is an Aurora Optima, or, or not Optima, Aurora uh, 88. And then this is the. Uh, Sailor 1911 standard size. And so you can see the uh, this is like one of the bigger pens that you, you'll find. It's about the same size as the 823 and the VAC 700, although it is uh, girthier than either of these two and also heavier than either of those two. This actually weighs in at a fairly hefty 35 grams when it's capped, which is, a, which is about an ounce. Um, uh, well, actually, it's 1.2 ounces. That's a little bit over an ounce. Uncapped, 24 grams, which is 0.9 ounces. So it's a fairly it's a fairly hefty pen. It holds quite a bit of ink, and it's going to feel very substantial in the hand, even though it's a plastic body. Uh, but it's uh, you know got that that brass piston in there. So there you go. All right. Also, stick around at the end of the video. You'll see uh, all the the lengths and measurements and all those kinds of things. All righty. Let's take caps off of things and show them uncapped. So here you have it uncapped, and uh, when you have the cap off, it's the same length, uh, basically, as the Pilot Vanishing Point, which doesn't actually get any shorter when you uncap it, because it doesn't have a cap. Uh, it's a little bit longer than the 823. It's just about the same as the VAC 700. So a really long uh, pen, and also you can see here, it's definitely the biggest nib out of all the rest of these. This is a, this is a big one. Okay, let's put the caps on. We'll do a little writing sample. Okay, this is the Pelican. <laughs> 1,000, <laughs> there we go. This is the Pelican M1000, this is a medium nib. And it's a nib that I actually really enjoy writing with. A lot of people, um, like this nib is a little bit divis divisive because uh, it is very soft. So here is the uh, here is a line with no pressure, which is a very uh, sort of standard line. I would say it's kind of on the broad side, even though this is uh, labeled a medium, but that's not a surprise coming from a Pelican. And then if you apply a little bit of pressure, you get like really wide paintbrushy strokes from this thing uh, and then back down I am no good at flex writing and I tend to be gent gentle with this nib and so I don't really I don't do this uh, but in general you'll get a very nice kind of bouncy feeling from it uh, some people make it, say that it feels mushy. Uh, to me I wouldn't say mush I actually really like the way this feels I do like the um, uh, I, I like, actually like the ink in here a lot. I've got a, a super sheener in here. This is uh, Diamine Skull and Roses, which you can see drying to a very nice sheen. And if you have a, an, an ink that you want to show sheen on, I don't know, throw it in a Pelican M1000. You'll have a good time. Also, if you have an, a pen or an, uh, an ink that writes a little bit dry or has a tendency to dry up in your nib or to uh, hard start or something, Pelicans might be your friend because uh, they really uh, they have a lot of flow and so inks tend to behave very well in them. Uh, that said, if you put a, a wet ink in this pen, you will have a bad time. It will be a fire hose. So uh, be mindful of your, your ink choices and such with Pelicans, but it really can unlock the really good stuff in a uh, dry ink or uh, an ink like this. It's a super sheener and give you that pow. I mean, look at that. Look at that red pow in there. And uh, <laughs> I dig it. So this is the Pelican M1000. You will find prices on these 
all over the map. So I've seen them as low as 400 bucks. Uh, I actually got um, I got this one at least secondhand. It may have been well more than that uh, at a very good deal, but um, you'll find them uh, new for like between four and seven hundred dollars, sometimes more, and that's just for the regular old black ones. If you go for like the fancier looking ones, there are demonstrator versions. There are a lot of versions of the Pelican M1000, but uh, it varies wildly based on where you find it. It is more expensive in the U.S. than it is in, say, Germany. Um, there is a quite the uh, quite the difference in price there. So uh, if you do your shopping uh, online, you'll be able to find these around 400-ish sometimes. So there you go. Is it worth that much? I mean, it does some stuff you're not going to find in other pens. It's got a very good weight to it. It's got a nice thick section to it. The section is between 11.7 and 12.3. So not much of a taper, but that's right in my sweet spot. I think that's really good. It's got a great length to it. The nib is very nice. Uh, if you don't mind it being a little bit on the soft side, if you don't like that kind of soft, squishy-ish feel, you're not going to dig this pen. And so uh, I'd say give it a shot if you haven't tried something like that. Uh, but uh, if you get a chance to get your hands on one of these for a good price, I'd say go for it. Also, a lot of people will send pens like this uh, to Japan for... Um, uh, for Arushi work, Bocamundo has done some really amazing stuff on uh, Pelican M1000s, and I'm kind of tempted to do that with this one, just to just to give this black black bodied pen some uh, some pop. All right, thanks very much for hanging out and checking out this pen with me. Uh, I hope it was informative. If you have questions about the M1000 uh, or any of the other Pelican pens that I might, that I've shown, uh, let me know. Throw them in the comments and or uh, send me an email at mike at inkdependence.com and I will try to help you out with that. Uh, I will see y'all later. Peace out. Like, comment, subscribe, etc.